the video only eight months in the making this year. We're finally here. We're finally making this intro. I actually think I had filmed an intro back in April when I started this video, but we're not using that old one. Okay, thank you for jumping on the cat tree and Forbidden Taboo Reading Vlog Part 3. So I am here to read four banned forbidden taboo books and vlog them for you guys. I've done this video twice before on my channel. I'll link both of them down below. The first one is so cringy. I can't even stand it because I was still living. It was one of my first videos I ever had on my channel and I was still living at my parents' house and I'm like trying to talk so quietly about like priests, you know, you know, wild. So the four books that you're going to see in this video. First up, you're going to see Tortured Whispers by Danielle James. This one is just really taboo and forbidden. It is not banned though, at least as of the time that I read it, which was back in April. This one I think is still available on Kindle Unlimited. The second one is Hail by Kay Webster. So this one, I don't even know if she ever published it on Kindle Unlimited or anything, but it is banned. It's not available on Amazon. You have to go directly to her website. That's where I read it from. The third book is Vibe by Liza James. I personally I personally don't know why this one was banned. Truly, I don't, I can't understand. And I think it is available on Kindle Unlimited now, but I know in my paperback copy that I own of it, it even said like one of the front pages said like this book was deemed unfit for like public consumption at some point. So I don't know why this one was ever banned, but I do think it's easily available now. And then the fourth one that I read was Sick Fox by Tilly Cole. Now this one, I believe you can buy the paperback on Amazon, but you cannot buy the ebook. It's not in Kindle Unlimited and you do have to purchase it like from her website or I think you can get the paperback. That one was one of the darkest but yeah anyways you're gonna see vlog footage from all four of those so I hope you guys enjoy it. I love doing these videos. I think they're fun. It just took me a while to get this one done so so far sorry for that. Thank you for being patient. And obviously before we jump in really quick, I just want to preface that once again, from the title, we're reading Banned Forbidden Taboo Books. So if you are just going to get in the comments and be like, that sounds disgusting or like that book shouldn't exist. Okay, I don't know what you're doing here then because that's the point of this video to read books that definitely push people's boundaries so much that sometimes they got banned. You know, keep an open mind here or maybe this just isn't the video for you and I'll see you in the next one, which if so, no worries. But uh, we're not gonna get down in the comments there and get all like, oh, I can't believe that book was made, you know? Anyways, let's jump in. First check-in for this vlog with the first book, Tortured Whispers by Danielle James. I am 36% of the way through. I think I'm on chapter nine. I did not know what this one, like what kind of relationship this one was because the blurb does not say. It just says it's an extremely taboo novel, not for the faint of heart and dark and to like check your triggers. And it definitely is dark in terms of like mental health and self harm with our main character and the taboo relationship in it is an uncle and a niece, blood related uncle and niece. So I don't, this one is still on Amazon. It's still on Kindle Unlimited. I don't know how it's not banned. Caesar is Anthony's younger brother and Anthony is Brooklyn's father. So Brooklyn is 18 though. So like nothing there. At the start of the book, we immediately know right off the bat that Brooklyn is struggling with a couple different things. She's struggling with anxiety, she's struggling with depression, and she also has speech apraxia. I think that's how you pronounce it. But so she has trouble pronouncing some of her words and like is very scared of talking out loud, like specifically her R's. So she gets bullied in school a lot from kids. Her dad has never taken her in to see anyone. So she's not having like any form of treatment for this. So the only way that she knows how to cope is to self harm. And that is like on page. So definitely take care of yourself before reading this book if that is something that is going to be triggering for you. Brooklyn has no friends. She's very lonely and it's just her and her dad. But then her dad says that her uncle is going to be coming and staying with them for a few weeks because he is going to be finding a home in the area and is going to be staying there while he kind of like gets things closed out and such. So when Caesar arrives, he is a psychologist. He immediately is like, why the fuck have you not taken her to talk to anyone? You idiot. He immediately tries to like 
help Brooklyn out and kind of like pull her out of her shell and just show her that he is like a safe person for her to talk to and stuff and she immediately like latches on to that and she tells him like you make the water in my head go away and the way that her anxiety and depression is described in this I think is really really it's a great analogy honestly and I don't know about Daniel James but if I found out that she struggled with anxiety and depression I would not be surprised because I think that it is like a very realistic depiction of it written on page of like the feeling of it. Oh, I like that so far. However, here's the thing with Brooklyn and Caesar is that she he very much feels like the only person that she has. So right now it is kind of feeling a bit of like he's just the first person to show her any kind of comfort. I need to see a little bit more from that or like more for their connection than just like her him being like a safe person for her. The other part of this is he they are not really denying their relationship i mean they are like he says like we can't do this because okay also the dad died r.i.p he had a heart attack so now caesar has taken him brooklyn and she's going to live with him and so now there's like no one standing in their way in regards to like another family member to watch to like find them out about but he keeps saying like we can't do this we can't be together we can't cross that line but yet they just like got each other off in the kitchen and I'm just like, mm, we're only 36% in. That's a little quick for you being a full on blood related, but we will see. This is a short book. I think it's only 180 pages. So I do think we have to move kind of quickly. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but I am liking it so far. Okay, I just got to chapter 15. I'm 74% of the way through. There was just a line in Caesar's point of view, how he said that him and Brooke's grief stitched them together. But like we've seen some of Caesar's grief through his counseling sessions with his counselor, but we have not seen any really from Brooke like she has not really mourned her dad at all and we haven't really seen like we've seen some of their grief but I don't know it just hasn't had the emotional punch that it could you know of being like oh because this would be like a really pivotal thing that I would think would bond two people but this is just like not giving what it could give fully other thing that is getting a little repetitive is that anytime something happens Brooke like immediately reverts back to like I'm a fuck up I'm a fuck up and I'm like but you're like I get it I get it I do but also it's like every small thing that happens she immediately is like so hateful towards herself which I don't think is like inaccurate to the character because she really doesn't have like a high opinion of herself but I would just like to see some sort of growth as she is like growing with Caesar and working with her therapist to like see that change in her and like we just really haven't seen any of that so far and just one other side note here there are quite a few like punctuation things that I've noticed that are wrong and a couple of spelling errors and it, that's not anything huge I get it that that happens I notice it and it does kind of bug me a little bit like I'm not trying to be too nitpicky but there are some punctuation marks that are not correct and some spellings that are not correct but anyways whatever that's beyond the point the angle in this lighting is probably not the best we're doing this kind of on the fly here I'm just getting dressed quick um after work I just finished with work and now I am going to go meet one of my friends for dinner. It is 72. Ow, Dory, don't claw me. Stop, if you just want to be held, all you have to do is ask. Say hi. It is 72 degrees outside, and I hope that the patio is open at the bar kind of grill type of place they are going to for dinner. It hasn't been open the past times that we went there because obviously, like, it's been winter, but... It's 72 degrees today, so I hope it's open. I finished Tortured Whispers uh, last night. And actually, oh my god, wait. I had a little list with my notes, but it's on my phone. Let me check my notes app real quick, and I'll come back. The live stream was hard to read, and like it did seem like just a little much. Like I understand what I think Danielle James is going for, but I don't like a character who is just one dimensionally evil 
And like, I knew not to trust Ashley. I think we all knew not to trust Ashley. And it was so hard to just watch like the one person that potentially she thought could be a friend, like completely betray her. And like that she never got like a true friend throughout this whole story. I wish that we would have gotten something like some kids, you know, came up to her when she went back to school and like, wanted to be your friend, but we didn't even get any of that. I didn't love that. The other thing that kind of ties in with the live stream and her suicide attempt, which is horrifying to read, but I don't think it came out of left field for our character. But then her being pregnant and in the hospital, it was like never once discussed afterwards, like, holy shit, you were pregnant. Like it was more focused on the grief of losing the baby, which like I totally understand. But there was never like once where her and Caesar were like, yeah, we maybe should have been using protection. Like you literally got pregnant. They never had a single conversation of being like, oh my God, she got pregnant. And then afterwards they go back to hooking up again. No protection, no conversation, nothing. They just go back to it like nothing ever happened. Which, so I didn't really like that. I felt like they needed some sort of acknowledgement of the fact that they literally got pregnant. That kind of stri struck me a little weird. And the last thing was kind of going into the taboo factor of this book. Obviously it's super taboo because they are uncle and niece, but it didn't necessarily feel super taboo because the fact that the one person that knew about them like uh, immediately was defensive of them and like agreed with them and I don't know I feel like in taboo books part of the like taboo level of it is the people around them being like what the fuck is going on like what is your relationship and the one person who knew was like supportive and helped him keep his license and I do understand that the doctor slash friend was coming from it at, uh, from a scientific perspective and like he does research into whatever it is, like the genetic attraction thing. But it still was just kind of like, are we really just, are we just all cool with this? We're just all gonna look over the fact that this uncle and niece are together. I don't know. So that almost like took away from the taboo-ness a little bit. Like it didn't feel as taboo because the fact that no one else seemed to be like concerned. But overall, I ended up giving it three stars because I did enjoy it. I just think that it could like, this was like, I felt like the bones and I feel like it could have had like so much more. Yeah, next what I'm going to jump into, I think is going to be Hail. I did, um, Kay Webster, you can buy the ebook off of her website. So I bought that. Um, so I think I'm probably going to jump into that one next. Yeah, first one down. And so far, I feel like this vlog is off to like a solid start. So this one's really going to make me question things again, isn't it? Oh, okay. So I am on chapter 10. I'm 33% of the way through Hail by Kay Webster. I really like it so far. I really like it. And I'm glad. I did not like The Wild. I did that one in my first Band Forbidden and Taboo reading vlog. And it wasn't even the relationship. It was like, I hated the wilderness. I hated that they were the only two characters. Like there was so much about that book that I just did not like. But this one, I get the premise. I get the premise again of these like two characters being forced into circumstances that are like very traumatic. And and on Hudson's side, taking on like a lot of responsibility and on Riley's side, not having her mom and dad there who really like helped her out with her mental health and tried to like keep her on top of feeling good or like her aunt just kind of fucking sucks to be honest. <laughs> Even listening to Hudson talk about how growing up, how he was like angry at her about her depression and like because he couldn't understand it and control it that it made him mad at her for it and i get like right like where riley is and like her headspace and like just the thought of them both losing their parents and being thrust into this like traumatic circumstance of just being the two of them like i can't imagine that and like that's so scary to think about and so like i understand why these characters are like coming together and bonding i don't know y'all i don't know and like i don't know if this one has a happy ending or not i I think it does because it's classified as a romance, but like I kind of wish that I was headed towards like Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma territory here because I'm just kind of in the mood to be emotionally destroyed by something. I think with a lot of these books where it's like keeping it in the family, I'm kind of like, how does this actually come out well? Ways. Yeah, 33% of the way through and I am liking it. Nor the sound machine, like always with these check-ins that I do at night from in bed. I am 56% of the way through Hail. I'm on chapter 16. And one thing that I am liking more about this book in particular than Tortured Whispers 
is that they are denying their relationship. Like Riley and Hudson are continuously, I mean, they're like giving in to certain aspects of their relationship and they've definitely like acted upon their desires, but not all the way yet because they're like, we can't cross that line. Like that is the one line that we cannot cross. Like, yes, we can cuddle, we can kiss, we can do that. But like that final line, we cannot cross. And I think that is what's making this taboo like so much better than in Tortured Whispers when they like really didn't care and they just started hooking up like almost instantly after her father passed. Like there was no really sense of being like, we can't do this. It was all of a sudden like, yeah, whatever. So I do like that these two are like fighting it so hard, but they know... They're like, it's not fair that we've already gone through so much shit and like we're already alone that then we have to be even lonelier on top of that. I I just, I like that they're denying it. That's what I like about a taboo book is when there's so much like we really should not be doing this and we can't be doing this. And like there's so much denial that then leads up to that like breaking point for the characters. Okay, so right after I made that last video of like checking in, um about like how they're denying it literally that chapter they crossed the final line and I was like wow how ironic that I made that note right then and there I'm now on chapter 20 I'm 72 percent of the way through and they just had like a conversation about their love and like comparing it to like Romeo and Juliet and like just tragedies and like tragic love stories and they're like our parents was a tragic love story and Hudson promised that theirs wouldn't be tragic but is it going to be? I truly don't see how this ends up happy. Especially because one, they're kind of reckless. And two, their aunt is already on to them. Which I'm like, their aunt is a weird character. Because like sometimes she's really sweet. And other times she's like really bitchy. I don't know. Like it's like she flip flops so quickly. I'm like, are you an ally? Well, not like an ally in this relationship. But like, are you a mother figure to riley or are you like an antagonist for riley because she like takes her to her doctor's appointment she's like you know we'd never kick you out and you're welcome to stay as long as you want but then like the chapter before she's like fighting with her about college and it's like you will go to college i don't know she's a weird character to me anyways i'm gonna keep going but is it bad that i kind of want it to be tragic like not that i'm rooting against you two because i actually kind of am rooting for you but i am kind of rooting for a tragic ending because I love a tragic ending. I don't know why I didn't just do this update when I literally just had my tripod out and like had my phone set up. But anyways, I just got done filming a video for this week. So I figured I'd do my last hail update before I like completely get, I already changed my shirt um, into something more <laughs> comfortable. But before I like get completely unready, anyways, I finished Hail last night by Kay Webster and I still like, I don't know how, like I truly don't know a rating for it if I'm being honest. Part of me, I enjoyed it, I did. So it's almost like, should I give it a four? But then there's another part of me that it's like the ending, the fact that it ended happy for me, almost like I don't like it as much because of that. And I think it's just because the ending was almost like wrapped up a little too neat. But although I guess, so they are like living their lives. They're like in more of a secluded area at the end. You know, they're like off in a cabin, but they do have kids together. And like their aunt and uncle, like, no, but they like still continue up with their lie, which at least like, I'm glad that they're like, we still cover our tracks and like that we aren't just like out and open about it. So I guess that does make sense, but... I don't know I think it's just that the fact that it like it all kind of worked out for them for me is like kind of hard for me to believe same with like in Tortured Whispers I was kind of like everything just like worked out okay I don't know I definitely like this one way more than Tortured Whispers and I do actually like I did really like the connection between Hudson and Riley like for being again like a brother and sister I was kind of like rooting for them even like when they got caught I was like oh my god like I didn't want I mean I wanted them to get caught for the drama of it but I didn't want them to get caught because I didn't want them to like be separated I don't know I feel like so torn on my rating because it's like three or four three or four three or four I don't maybe it's like three and a half I don't know but then on Goodreads what do I rate it I don't know and also I thought that this relationship was like believable I guess I'll we'll put it at three and a half I think on Goodreads I might round it up to four but put like three and a half rounded up and I guess I don't even really have like many coherent thoughts to give like as the on the book as a whole but I guess you it's just like you see how these two characters did bond together in their grief 
and how, yeah, I don't know. I guess this is like a pretty lame check-in or final check-in for me to be like, I don't know. I obviously get why it's banned and I got, well, no, I don't get why it's banned because I think just banning books is dumb. Wow, so not only am I trash for quite literally taking seven months to get back into this vlog, I now realize I haven't made a single check-in for Vibe yet, and I am on chapter 15. I am 35% of the way through this book. So, so, so far, I'm really liking this one. The beginning, like right from the beginning, it gripped me. I don't love the insta love or kind of, or not like insta love, instant attraction, I guess, that Ruby and Aura had for each other and how like the first night, Ruby was like, you know that we have a connection like no one else. And I'm like, do you? Y'all literally just met. But I think they're like connecting on like a different vibe. So Aura's history is very intriguing. So she came from a cult. She was raised in a cult and she's run away. She recently got to her job where then like a bouquet of flowers from her stepdad was there waiting for her. Hello, are you going to interrupt the check-in? Okay, goodbye. The cats are wild right now. It's kind of like suspense-y a little bit with that, of just like seeing them come back, or I'm assuming they're going to come back into play. And here's the thing, her boyfriend and best friend, red fucking flags. Maybe they're like spying on her for the cult or something. I don't know, they're totally sus. And then also Ruby has this one dude that comes to the club that like assaults her and like assaults other women there. So I'm of him too so i don't know there's a lot of people with red flags i think it's definitely going to be a really dark book but i don't know why it was banned at least as of right now i don't see anything like particularly insane with it so i don't know the original reason why this was even banned so i am reading it on kindle unlimited i do own the paperback but it's just been easier and i read faster on my kindle okay i think i last updated when i was at chapter like 15 i'm on chapter 19 now of vibe i got there like what two nights ago now so here's the thing though I was so excited to get home. I've had family in this weekend, in town this weekend. So I've been over at my parents' house. So I haven't had a lot of time to read. So I was so excited to get home today and get reading on Vibe and like hopefully finish it. And then I realized that it is in fact today, December 4th. And um, right, December 4th today. And uh, I'm supposed to be having three Sophie Lark books done by next Tuesday. So I have like a little over a week to read those three books. So I'm gonna have to put Vibe down and I'm gonna start Brutal Prince next. I am really, really enjoying this. I'm loving all of the layers in terms of these characters. It's very dark. There's like graphic on-page violence towards these women that is so hard to read. I'm so intrigued by Aura's backstory and with the cult leader, like Malin coming back for her and then like targeting ruby through like targeting her through ruby and how malin and the dude that harasses ruby and assaults her on dom i think his name is on like a regular basis he comes into the club that she's like i think she needs a few more sessions i'm like do all these people work for the the cult it's i'm just so intrigued by the premise of this book i'm really liking these two characters together i just overall i'm loving it so very excited to jump back in when i can but like i said i'm gonna have to take a quick break but hopefully once i get some of these mafia books cranked out i'll be able to jump back in good morning so i finished vibe last night thank goodness we're making progress on this vlog because it is currently the week before I'm uploading this video, like I'm getting down into crunch time. I think I'm supposed to upload it in like seven days, which is fine, but I need to like be cranking away on this. I loved this book. I loved it. It was dark. It was messed up. It was twisted. It was hot. It was so good. So I don't quite remember where I last updated with this because I took a break to do the Sophie Lark reading vlog like while I was reading this book and I was really worried that that was going to taint my enjoyment of this one because when like I just thought like taking such a huge break I read three books in between this book like while I had started and finished this one and I was worried because I got like great feelings at the start of uh the book that I was worried that it wouldn't feel the same when I jumped back in but it did and it was amazing I loved this I'm gonna spoil some stuff here so obviously if you don't want any spoilers you can skip ahead but I was sus on Hawk and Bethy from the beginning like they gave me sketch vibes I don't think I necessarily thought 
right from the bat that they were from the cult that they were like sent there but after he started like saying some things to her and she started like hearing certain words then I'm like oh yeah um that's sketchy so that was surprising I also did not expect I expected Dom to be a part of the nation as well with how he was talking and that him and Malin were like buddies but I did not expect for him to be her father and that he legitimately assaulted his own daughter sir you're messed up so first off okay I feel like I'm kind of getting ahead of myself I just loved Ruby and Aura's relationship absolutely loved that I loved the progression of their relationship even though it did it started like a little like insta lusty it definitely developed like an emotional connection between the two of them that I really felt that emotional connection between them and then also I loved like their moments together that they had especially like the moment when they were like taking when Aura was like taking her picture and stuff it was just like cute relationship type moments like that that I really enjoyed between the two of them and I liked their dynamic I liked how they pushed each other and how Ruby just really wanted Aura to like step into her own and be like this very like strong woman and like know that she can make her own choices even though like obviously Ruby wants to like be a little dominant and have her kind of do what she says she also wants Aura to like push back on her and truly stand up for herself and have her like autonomy that was so good it was so heartbreaking seeing the two of them trying to keep the other safe from people in their lives that are just out to like outright ruin them oh so good hawk the com i was like aura you're being dumb why are you going to your apartment by yourself he's quite literally so sketchy like you can't just be like oh he's probably not home like no he's sketchy don't go there so then obviously when he like flipped a lid and kidnapped her i was like yep that sounds about right did like though when the two of them killed him fun cute bonding time and also love that aura was the one to like do that because i felt like she really needed to and then when Dom and Malin showed up, I was like, fuck. And then when they separated them in the rooms and then we, and then, oh my God, when, oh, when Ruby got branded, ouch. Oh my God. I was like cringing reading that. Cause I'm like, that's gotta be so freaking painful. And finally the whole like showdown with the cult and then realizing like Ruby's parents are in the cult as well. And then like how all of these things that came out and the whole ceremony and everything just absolutely wild. I did think at one point, I was like, how are they going to get out of this? Like, I truly didn't know how they were. And I don't know if I quite buy Bethy, like, being the one to expose it all because she had shown us nothing but, like, distaste towards the both of them. So I don't know. But I mean, like, that's fine. I'm glad that they got out of it either way. I liked that it didn't end, like, all perfectly. Like, oh, they're all in jail and we're happily ever after. It was like, no, a lot of them, like, got out of jail and, like, have disappeared since. So, like, some darkness has swallowed them up. I like that. It's like a little ominous. Not wait to read more of Liza James because I just loved her writing. Some of the way that she like worded things, especially like there was that one time when Ruby and Aura were each in those like rooms at the club with Malin and Dom after they had killed Hawk. We're in Ruby's head and we're seeing Aura and she's talking about how like the deadness in her eyes, but she also sees like a little bit of a fire burning there. And it was like someone who had just grown their wings and can like tuck them back in until they can be free again. I worded that so bad, but it was like, I read that and I was like, oh, like that was just an amazing visual. I loved her writing. So I seriously cannot wait to read more. Last but not least, Sick Fox by Tilly Cole. So I'm going to start that today and I will keep y'all updated. I am about a hundred pages into this. And so far, I mean, it's dark already it like that those first couple chapters i mean the chapters are long so actually what i'm only on chapter six but i'd say like those first what like three chapters were like really hard to read i don't know what to say guys <laughs> i'm not instantly gripped by this i will say i think because i'm kind of like taken aback i knew this was dark obviously i at least see with this one why people like might be upset i still don't think that's the reason to ban the book um because I'm just like not about banning books but like vibe I 100% I'm like why the hell was that banned that makes literally no sense to me this one I'm like ooh, okay but still doesn't need to be banned I also just don't know how much I'm like loving all of the Alice I mean like I like that I get it but at some point I'm kind of like okay can we move past some of these metaphors and like into the bulk of the story I don't know I don't know I'm really like mixed on this one right now I, it's gonna be one that I'm gonna have to I think I'm gonna have to see the story as a whole 
to then reflect back on it. The only part that I can say that I liked so far was Rabbit's time when he was in that like prison, the water tower, I think it was called, with Chapel and Henry and like their kind of friendship that they forged in there. I liked that stuff, but that was again, that was like one chapter and now done. So I don't know. I did like that we at least saw the one lady, um, her like nanny lady get killed good bye you're a trash so i am excited i guess to see the rest of these men get what's coming to them so i am excited for that i'm assuming that that's what this is going to go into like a revenge type plot which i'm here for especially after what these two have had to go through already but um i'm gonna put this down for the night because i can't handle any more heaviness so i'm going to switch over to one of my unhinged christmas novellas hello okay it is Saturday, December, what? What's today? Is it today the 17th? Um, yeah, I'm literally wearing a tank top, but I'm so freaking hot because I had so much stuff to carry out for my car. I just got home a little bit ago and I was roasting in my sweater that I was in. So I was like, I need to put on a tank. So also this is like awkward height because it's like a little too far back, but then I have to hunch forward. Anyways, I'm here with an update on sick fucks because I read quite a bit last night i want to say i got to page 200 ish so so far they have made two of their kills and we've gotten the third pov i can't is his name danny i can't remember the other guy that was there when they were younger but i'm getting like sketch vibes from him so he's a ranger now and dolly is reported missing and now they found the first body of the lady who that they first killed when they when he then took dolly now that is reported and they're thinking that maybe that's connected but like not for sure and then now obviously they've killed the second guy which uh uncle clive oh no so they've killed three people now because they killed the one they killed the one like nanny lady then they killed the one dude who wanted them both and they were like oh you can have both of us now and then they killed uncle clive so they've killed three people so far the first dude's death was like pretty good like i kind of like that and how they were like playing with him i will say trigger warning for ant well like people violence but animal violence technically they were dead they had like a whole scene of him teaching dolly how to kill and she used a bunch of dead pigs for practice so like they're all dead but it's like a whole chapter of them just like mutilating dead pigs so it's a little mo so i kind of like glossed over that chapter because nothing really that important was happening and i don't want to see dead animals being like destroyed so i skipped over that you could too here's here's my thing with this okay and you know what this is getting annoying so i'm gonna like take this and i'm gonna sit down and just hold it here's my thing with this book so far is that i'm enjoying the premise i'm enjoying these two characters who are so bonded in their shared trauma from when they were kids and like this deep friendship and love for each other that runs very very deep I love that. And I like that it's like a revenge thing. Like it's like kind of like the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abby. Lana Meyer's getting her revenge. It's like these two getting their revenge. The thing that I'm kind of struggling with right now is one, it's very graphic, which like fine, but not even just graphic in terms of the violence, but also when they were killing Uncle Clive, like the one that he then like really had a lot of like anger at and like a lot of traumatic experience with, is with it was also graphic because when we find him he's now hurting two other kids like he's actively hurting them when we find him and then as uh rabbit is killing them he's like saying all this stuff that like he used to say to him and it's just like hearing that again like that abuse from his childhood is just like it's it's tough to read it really is hard and the other thing with dolly and his like more romantic relationship that we're getting a little bit it it i'm it's very beautiful how they're like coming together and like kind of helping heal each other's trauma and like overcoming that together like i do really like that however for dolly's character because even though she is like in her 20s her mind is like locked away and she has like a very like she's in this whole like alice in wonderland mindset and like she's not ellis and she's not like this 20 something year old woman she is like in this childlike state of mind and like that's how she's like been able to cope so i understand that once again but it is for me it's kind of hard then to read scenes when they're like 
intimate with each other when she's still like kind of childlike, like childlike mindset. I don't know. It's it's just it's just trickier for me. I guess I've never read anything kind of like this. It, this I will say this book is so unique. I have quite literally never read a single book like this before in my entire life. The characters, the premise, the Alice in Wonderland parallels. So I don't know if I'm going to finish tonight. It's 8 17. I have to be kind of up and out of here early tomorrow morning. I'm going over to my brother and sister-in-law's house. So I got to be leaving here kind of early. So I don't know if I'll finish tonight, but I might because here's the thing. These chapters are long too. Like they're long chapters because like the single chapters are like them killing people. So it, it kind of goes by quickly in that sense because once I finish one chapter, if I'm like, oh, I'm just going to read one more chapter. That could be like 40 pages. I don't think that this is going to be a five star book for me I'm gonna it's gonna teeter back and forth between three and four do you want to say hi say hi to the people you're so pretty all righty so it is now um sunday december i don't even know what day it is whatever we're towards christmas last sunday before christmas and i finished sick fox last night but i finished it like right before i went to bed so i did an update on it i'm really really torn on how i feel about this book and honestly i have not even i didn't give it a star rating on goodreads last night and honestly i don't even know what i'm gonna rate it in my reading journal because I don't think that the book is bad. I don't think that the character development is bad. The relationship development is bad. The writing itself is bad. Um, the whole Alice in Wonderland parallels and metaphor like was very consistent throughout the whole book. I don't think it's a bad book, so I can't reiterate that enough. However, my personal enjoyment of it was not... <sighs> I would say the highest. It was just really hard to read. I have already said how I felt about Dolly's character and certain times of like it being tough to read her and Rabbit having like intimate moments uh, just with how her kind of like headspace is. Like I understand the healing and I really enjoyed that that they got between each other and that they were kind of the only two people for each other. But it was still like, those scenes were like hard to read. I'm not a big fan of gore and all of the killings were very gory, which like they deserve. Like, I did, like I'm not denying that. So the final kill felt like kind of anticlimactic. Like it ended kind of quickly. Yeah, I don't know. Not that that needed to be dragged out a lot, I guess, because all the other deaths were dragged out quite a bit. And I liked, was his name Eddie? Why can't I remember this dude's name? I liked how Eddie came in clutch and like let them leave, but that also seemed like a really quick turnaround of him being like, she's mine. And then literally within like one scene, he's like, okay, actually, yeah, run away. I don't know. I will say my, I one of my favorite parts was Chapel and Henry. And what was the, his like other personality? I don't know. I loved those two guys and how they were like such friends and allies to heathen slash rabbit throughout the whole book. Like I really enjoyed those characters and those were kind of on, the only other like outside characters we got besides the ones that they were hunting down and killing. So I really enjoyed that. I will say I did find myself skimming quite a few of the scenes because like when Dolly was like dancing for him at that club, I was kind of like, uh, like I honestly just didn't really care. And a lot of like the gory scenes I found myself kind of like breezing over. So I I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm going to rate this one. But I will just say that truly like this book really, it just like really pushed me. And it's definitely unique. It's totally unlike anything that I've ever read before. I do see how people would really like it. Because like I said, the writing's not bad at all. The story's cool. But it was just for me, it was really hard to read at certain times. And like the gore factor of it. Like I just, I don't like gore. I don't like reading about gore. So that's it for this video. This was the last book for it. So only like how many months in the making of this video. Thank you guys for being very patient if you're still with me here at the end. I didn't intend for it to take this long, but you know, sometimes I just have to get a deadline like this, <laughs> like the end of the year rapidly approaching for it to like kick me in the ass and get it done. That is it for today's video. And yeah, thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you when I see you.